Hey everybody, how's it going? Just got back from Los Angeles. Um, my whole schedule has been thrown out of whack be for a couple days because uh, Spirit Airlines was nice enough to cancel my flight and that left me in LA for a couple extra days. Very cool because I got to hang out with a bunch of you guys. Uh, not so cool because I don't have a show for today. Fortunately though, uh, my good friend Robert Baker is going to step in. We've been planning on doing a collab for quite some time and I'm going to defer today's episode to him. He's got an amazing video on Sweep picking hacks. Uh, if you haven't already, please check out his channel. He's got all kinds of amazing guitar lessons. He's definitely worth watching. Well, hello there, everyone. Ha A second. This is my channel. Fricker. What's going on, everyone? My name is Robert Baker. I'm here today taking over Glenn's channel. Thank you to Glenn for letting me do this. And we thought maybe you guys would be interested in some guitar lessons. So if you dig kind of what's going on here, let us know down below in the comments section. Uh, there are tabs available for you. Those are down in the description as well. And just all that kind of stuff. So if you would be interested in more lessons on the channel, let us know. You know, this is, this is kind of what I do on YouTube. So what are we talking about today? Well, we are talking about sweet picking. So. I'm by no means super good at sweet picking. Uh, I listen to people like Jeff Loomis and I'm always in awe. And what I found is some tricks to kind of help me get a sweet picking sound without necessarily, um, you know, being crazy good at sweet picking <laughs> is basically what this is. So you can call it tricks, hacks, whatever you want. Uh, but these are, you know, some little tips and pointers I have for if you're maybe not the best sweet picker, but to still be able to get that, you know, a similar sweeping sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the lick so you can see if you even wanna learn them. And then I'm gonna break them all down for you and send you on your way with some sweet picking licks. <laughs> Okay, so let's dive on into these. So if you noticed, I was not playing any of these lightning fast because uh, the goal here is not how fast we can play these. We want smooth, even transitions across the strings. So um, the first one was utilizing something I teach all the time in my lessons is utilizing octaves. So we find a very simple two string arpeggio, which we did a D minor. And uh, this is just kind of getting that sweeping motion going for our hands. But we're gonna utilize the shape and move it in octaves across the string. So it starts out 10 on the low E string, and then 8 on the A, and 12 on the A. Now here's where the secret of it all kind of unfolds. So we have this mud. So this is a two string D minor arpeggio. Now what I'm doing is I'm going down on the 10, down on the 8, and up on the 12 on the A string. So, But when I say two downs, I don't mean two individual motions out of our hand. It's one down across two string. See, I'm not going. That's, that's wasted motion, and sweep picking is very um, efficient in the way your hand moves. So we're going to go down, down, up. And then I'm going to uh, move up an octave and go 12 on the D, 10 on the G, and 14 on the G, which is also down, down, up. Up again, we're going to go 15, 13, 17, down, down, up. So, so it kind of has the six string arpeggio sound. But when you really break it down, I think mentally it's easy, um, easier to kind of like digest because it's just two string arpeggios. If you can do that, just get used to moving it and you're all set. So, now when I descent, I went to that um, E flat or D sharp major arpeggio, whatever you want to call it. Just because it sounded cool. And I'm going to go all the way up here, so I'm basically reversing everything that I just did. I'm going to play 20 on the high, or was this 18 on the high E string and go to 15 on the high E and then 16 on the G. Now my picking is down, up, up. Again, not two ups, one up across two strings. Do the octaves, oh, helps if I know my octaves. We're gonna go 15, 12, and then 13, and then down one more time, which will be 13, uh, 10, and then 11. So, and there you have your first little example uh, utilizing octaves. All right, so what is next on the agenda? Well, what I did was I took a simple three string arpeggio, which I say simple, but I have the hardest time with these finger rolling ones, but hey, that's how we get better. We work on it. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm going like this. Now, a lot of times when we're doing arpeggios, we're constantly changing chords. You know, you might be going... You know, you're working through different chord progressions. Well, you can actually use the same chord multiple times, just play different inversions of it. So, we're going like this. We're going to go A minor to A minor to A minor. 8, pull off 5 on the high string. Now that, I do a down. Uh, you could do up if you want. Then I go up on 5 on the B. Then I go down on 5 on the G. And down on 5, down on 5. Then 8 again, so... Okay, then I go pull off again, so... Now when I go back to this 8, I'm going to slide up to 12. Now we're in a new version of the A minor. Pull off the 8. Then I go to 10, 9, 10. And then back to 8, 12. Slide up to 17. Pull off the 12, 13. 14 on the G, 13 on the B again. 12 on the high string. Then 17, pull off 12. And then 17 again. So slow, it would go like this. Oh. Don't go to that A flat <laughs> like I did. You could, it would work, but that's not what we're going for. You can even do another one if you wanted to. But for now, we're just doing those three, and then I would work on descending them. You know? Oh, maybe. So next on the agenda, movable shapes. Now, all these shapes are, of course, movable, but this one is the same shape moved all over the place. And what I'm talking about is a diminished arpeggio. So we're going to rock this one out of A. And uh, basically, if you don't know how you, you can utilize diminished arpeggios, we're going to go like this. So we're going to go 4, hammer on to 7. Then he goes, uh, and that's on the G, then 6 on the B, 4, 7 on the high string. So there's our first arpeggio. Now, a lot of times when people do diminished arpeggios, they just go 7, 4, like this. So what I'm utilizing is the octave of a note we're already playing. So now we have a hammer on. Six. So it buys your hand a little bit of time, because before it was three very rapid motions with our pick. You know, to get across those strings. Now, with that hammer on, it's only two rapid motions. So it kind of buys you a little bit more time. So to me, this one works. I do a lot of arpeggios like this. I have a six string one that we're going to do here in a minute based off of this technique. So right now we have this. You can descend if you want. And just kind of sit there on this one. And this will really get your hand working on that sweeping motion to where eventually maybe you want to do the full kind of like no hand runs and pull offs in there. But here's the trick. You can move up three frets. Same shape, we're going to go 7, 10, 9, 7, 10. Up three frets. Up three. My fingers don't fit up here. So that's how that one's going to work. And I would just work on transitioning between those two, because like I said, the shape stays exactly the same. Uh, try to use your pinky in there. So just a lot can be um, kind of like learned in our hands from the look like that. Okay, so now let's utilize that same technique of incorporating a hammer on into the mix of things. And basically we're going to take an A minor arpeggio. And uh, we're going to change it to an A minor 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a G note to it. Now what this does is this sets us up wickedly good to have these hammer-ons in here. So before we kind of had this shape, now we're going to be going, well here's a G note, there's a G note. So now it's just like a hammer, then pick. So pick, hammer. Okay, now I want to make it six strings, so we're going to add our fifth, that E note, on the low E string right here. So you don't have to always be starting on an A note for it to be an A minor arpeggio, so we're going to go 12 which is down, and then 10 hammer on 12 on the A, 10 on the D, 9 hammer on 12 on the G, 10 on the B, 8 to 12 on the high string. Okay, so now we have a nice sounding, like it, there's kind of a different rhythmic flow to it, but it still really works, and it's going to work great over those A's. 
sweep picking. Like I said, I'm going down, down, down. It's normal sweep picking, but all those hand runs and pull offs just allow me, anyways, to be much more relaxed and it gives you a lot more flow to the motion of the arpeggio. I say that as I mess up. You could, of course, incorporate this into all different kind of chord voicings and different, you know, uh, progressions and all that. Just make sure you know what chord you're doing with, with the notes you're adding. Because it can dictate a lot of what's happening with the chord. Alright, so now for this final one. So basically, um, this one is to me just something really cool. Uh, I, like to t I tend to play it unaccompanied without actually being used in a song, but I think it sounds nice. It's something I learned from Jason Becker, um, so it's a little ode to him, you know, the amazing, amazing Jason Becker. And uh, what he does is really cool is basically he would ascend a chord, sweeping, and then descend a different chord. So instead of like the normal kind of way of just, you know, go doing the same chord over and over again, um, he was mixing up. So basically our chord progression is going to be D to A. Then we're going to go to C major to a G. Not major 9, but we'll just go to G. So um, anyways, it's going like this. Okay, so here's what's happening. So we're starting here on the 10th fret, the low E string, which is our D note. And this part's really crucial. You're going to go 10, then 9, hammer on 12. Make sure you use your ring finger. Um, it sets you up much better here in just a minute. Now you're going to go from that 12 on the A, 12 on the D, 11 on the G, 10 on the B, 10 on the high E, 14 on the high E. So Now if you play that 14, you slide down to 12. Now we, we change chords now. 12 to 9, 10 on the B, 9, 11, 12. And you reach down to that seven, and then you hit that uh, B note on the or that C sharp, which is nine on the low E. So, okay, so this is part of that good old A chord. Now we're going to shift and go down to the next chord. So we're going to go to our C, which is the exact same pattern. This is why it's so cool. And we're going to go was this eight on the low E string, seven to ten, ten nine, eight or was this? Yep, eight eight. 12. So, if you have the other pattern, you'll be able to jump right into this. Slide down to 10, 7, 8, 7, 9, 10, 5, 7. And there you have it. So, Alrighty, huge thank you to you guys for checking out the video. Like I said before, let us know if you dug it. Would you like to see more of these kind of metal guitar lessons? Uh, just let us know and we'll, we'll kind of see what you guys think. And a huge thank you to Glenn for letting me be on his channel. I really appreciate it. And other than that, we're just going to send you on your way, get picking, grinning, and playing some guitar. I'm not sure why I'm pointing right now. Later, guys. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. If you like the content, please support the channel either at my SMG shop or through my Patreon. If you want to see more, hit one of the playlists. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here.